Hi, welcome to my FPG tutorial series. Uh, this will be a five or six video series and they'll be focusing on from pretty much nothing to a working system based on Terra 6D 10 standard board. And first, we'll say the first video is gonna be introduction, then will be a video for FPG only demonstration. So let's say we blink an LED or do something that's based on the FPG part because this chip actually has FPGA and a uh, dual core uh, Cortex A9 processor in that. So first we're going to play with FPGA and uh, in the third video maybe we can play with HPS. TerraSeq actually is kind enough to, sup to supply uh, I believe two different versions of images. One has LXD desktop and the other one is just a pure console Linux. And you don't have to do too much work, you just have to uh, extract image and put that in the SD card and you're good to go. And then the third video we're going, uh, and the fourth video we're going to pretty much dip into some of the more detail and some of the hard works. So we're going to use QCs and uh, uh, Quartus 2 to actually implement the uh, a more elaborated system with more collaboration between the, the uh, FPG and the ARM cores. And uh, we're going to customize the uh, reference system provided by TerraSeq and then finally we are going to demo, uh, showcase a demonstration application based on the collaboration between FPG and the HPS or the uh, ARM subsystem. So first let's talk about what is the uh, what is FPGA. So we know that we have processors. Traditionally we have the x86, we have the ARM, we have DSP processors and uh, the problem with this, this, these processors are uh, the they are really, really nice for executing sequential code. However, if you want to have some of your custom logic, let's say very, very simple things, you want to do some kind of different data pattern shifting or something, it's very, very simple, but just massive amount of the data, you're not going to do that with a traditional CPU because it will take a lot of CPU, uh, CPU cycles. So people will, will say, okay, if it's 30 years, 30 years ago, people will say, okay, I want to design a chip and that chip actually we have a physical chip and inside we have some logic and that does the uh, special logic things and in the modern days actually we can just use FPGA FPGA stands for Field, Field Programmable Gate Array so it's pretty much a lot of lot and lot of logic gates and you can program interconnection eventually you end up with a chip that is off the shelf, this readily make. You're not going to spend millions of dollars for designing the chip, but you can customize the logic inside. So it's pretty much in between of a uh, pure CPU solution, pure software solution for shuffling data, and design your own chip. Design your own chip with the fastest one, with the cheapest one, for per unit cost, and uh, it will be the most expensive one. And the implementing of software will be the easiest one, cheapest one, but it will be the worst performance. So FPGA is in between. So that's pretty much overview between FPGA and CPUs. And uh, there are different use cases of course. As I said before, if you want to handle a lot of different data or you want to handle data at very fast speed, then probably you need FPGA. And uh, a pure FPGA, here we have example. This is a Xilinx uh, CMOD A7, which is pretty much a just FPGA without anything else. It's basic FPGA, it has just pins, and it doesn't have a uh, hard CPU core, it doesn't have a uh, transceiver, whatever, it's just a plain FPGA. And then we uh, they will move uh, uh, to, let's, let's say, more elaborated system, you will have the FPGA plus CPU in the same package. And they have very, very, very high speed interconnection between the FPGA fabric and uh, the CPU part, like this chip. In this chip, we have more than 110,000 logic gates, and we have a dual core 925 megahertz uh, core uh, ARM Cortex A uh, A9, and uh, we have a lot of uh, RAM, and the RAM is of course off chip, and then we have some on chip uh, SRAM, a uh, very limited but very very high speed, and uh, that's pretty much the core of the board. And then we have a SD-RAM, the, the, uh, the DDR3 is for the uh, HPS, and we have a uh, 
plain old SD RAM is for the FPGA and uh, that's pretty much a core system and then move along we have some expansion of this board so we have a power jack we have a switch we have a uh, analog input port that's powered by linear technology ADC chip then we have a USB byte blaster and uh, here we can see that is the actual byte blaster chipset we have a uh, uh, Cypress USB uh, controller chip and then we have a uh, Altera CPLD, that's the byte blaster part and then we have the PS2 interface is connected to the FPGA and we have the codec, audio codec and uh, three channel audio I.O. that's actually a microphone line input stereo and the line output stereo and then we have the composite and VGA video output and that's powered by I believe two analog devices chips and move along we have a uh, Ethernet fee and Ethernet chip and uh, sorry, Ethernet interface and this interface along with that we have uh, two USB ports the uh, Ethernet and uh, the USB ports they are connected to the HPS subsystem and the codec VGA they are connected to the uh, uh, FPGA subsystem and then we have a small uh, a mini USB port that connects to a uh, C-Labs USB to UART bridge and that gives a hardware serial port that goes to the HPS as well so you can interact with the Linux kernel uh, via this port and then we have a small uh, micro SD card and uh, the card doesn't come with the uh, board that's actually another just I have this card and uh, that connects to HPS and that can be used to boot the entire system so interesting thing is because now we have a ARM processor can be boot from this SD card and also we have FPGA, so we can configure the FPGA in many different ways. So first we can simply just download the program from the Byte Blaster, do the uh, configuration SRAM of the FPGA, or we can download the program to the EPCS device. And then whenever we power up the device, the system, we can configure the FPGA from the EPCS. Or because we have now we have the ARM processor, we can put the normal Linux from this card and uh, during the boot phase and to U-boot can configure FPGA so that's one more possibility and that means we can configure the entire system just based on single card and then moving down we have HSMC interface and uh, that also goes to the uh, FPGA part we have the GPL port that also goes to the FPGA part and we have a user button and the reset pin, reset buttons and we have the uh, one user LED this goes to the uh, HPS part and then we have a lot of switches buttons and seven segment they all go to the uh, uh, FPGA part and finally we have a uh, LCD display that's a uh, monochrome 128 by 64 LCD that goes to the uh, HPS. So that's pretty much a brief introduction of the board. Um, the uh, yeah. So this board is the Terrasic D10 standard, and uh, this video is actually sponsored by Terrasic. They are kind enough to give me this board for free. So yeah, I'll be working on this board for the recent days and uh, also for the coming days. I've been already working on the QCs and the video will come soon and then I'm also will we'll find some time to work on the final demonstration application and it's gonna be a really really cool application alright thank you for watching this video please subscribe and uh, thumbs up thank you